Good morning, everyone. Hope you're having a, a good morning so far. Um, here we are ready to start another week. Tracy, I know exactly what you're talking about after this long weekend. Uh, today does feel like Monday. <laughs> but uh, here we are and re ready for another dose of encouragement. Very excited to have each of you uh, joining in with us this morning. Hope you did have a, a good Labor Day and uh, we're able to enjoy the day with some family and uh, maybe get some some needed rest and relaxation. Um, but good morning, uh, Phil and Miss Peggy. Good morning, Pat. Uh, so glad that each of you are joined in with us this morning. Uh, good morning, Marvin and Brenda. It's good to see y'all this morning. Good morning, Peggy. And um, hoping all of you have a good day today. Um, <clears throat> We need to remember uh, Tim and Laquita Fuqua in our prayers this week, this morning. Uh, Tim and Laquita are regular viewers uh, of our Dose of Encouragement devotional. Tim uh, preaches for the Doors Chapel Church of Christ over near Trenton, Tennessee. His wife Laquita is actually a cousin of mine. But uh, Tim went for some scans last week and... Uh, some of those scans came back abnormal. And so he'll be going today to meet with doctors at Kirkland's Cancer Center in Jackson uh, to get some information about his treatment plan. And so I know they could really use our prayers this morning. And uh, we, we wanna, we're going to mention them in our prayer today. And uh, I'd like for each of you, please, to be remembering Tim and Laquita in your private prayers and uh, you know for that matter if any of you have any other prayer requests that you'd like for us to make today uh, feel free to leave that in the comments and and I'll be watching for those uh, for our prayer in here in just a moment uh, good morning Amanda and Miss Jane it's good to see y'all joined in with us came across a funny little story the other day and it's one of those stories that reminds you that as a worker, uh, you can't always trust that your boss knows what he's doing. There was this young engineer just out of college where he graduated with honors and working for a firm. And, and he is leaving the office one afternoon, late in the afternoon. And as he passes by... Um, the uh, supply room, he notices the CEO standing in front of a shredder with a piece of paper in his hand. And the CEO notices him. He says, hey, come here for just a second. He says, listen, this is a very sensitive and important document. And my secretary is not here. And I, I don't know how to make this thing work. Can you help me? And the young engineer said, certainly. Uh, I can help you with that, and um, I have switched to my other camera here. This looks like I'm having some trouble with my my camera on my phone this morning. Sorry about that, but uh, the young engineer says, certainly, I can help you with that. Sure, so he takes the piece of paper, and he, he turns on the machine. He inserts the piece of paper, and he hits the start button. And the CEO seems instantly relieved. He says, oh, excellent, excellent. Thank you so much. I just need one copy. Well, you can almost feel the sweat starting to pour on that young engineer's face when he, he realized that what the CEO was really looking for was the copier machine, not the shredder. Um, but the fact of the matter is, you can't always trust that your boss uh, knows what he's doing. But a Christian can always trust that the Lord knows what he's doing. It's amazing how many different situations lead us back to the cross. And, and looking at Jesus as our example of, of how to handle any situation in which we might find ourselves. For example, when he prayed from the Garden of Gethsemane and he said, Let this cup pass from me. You know that he is bearing a weight that he really would like to lay aside. He, he's stressed, he's strained, he's hurting, 
He's uh, struggling in ways that would be impossible for us to even comprehend. And yet, before he finishes the prayer, what does he pray? Nevertheless, not my will, but thy will be done. He, like so many of us, he struggles with a situation that he wants to go away. But yet at the same time, he knows that God is in control. He knows that God always does what is right. And if God's answer is for him to face that cup, then he knows that's what is best. He trusts that. And that's, I think that's where we all face the greatest test of our faith, is to trust that God is doing what's right, even in those situations that are stressful or painful or frightening for us. And then go to the cross. He pray, uh, First of all, he shouted, My God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? He felt all alone in his pain and his agony and the torture that he was going through. Not just from a physical standpoint, but from a spiritual standpoint, to be, to be left there to die all alone. And yet, before the day was over, he cried out to the Lord, Father, into your hands I commit my spirit. As painful as it was for him to die the death that he died on that cross, he put his trust in the Lord that it was right, that it was good. It was painful, but it was going to work out for good. And Jesus understood that our salvation would be hopeless were it not for the death that he died there. There's that trust that whatever the Lord is doing, it's, it's right, it's good. In this back and forth, we see it is often painfully difficult for us to accept what is happening to us. But we can also hear that faith that can trust God no matter what it is. God never promised us that all things should be good. But he did promise us that all things will work together for good. And we can always trust that God knows what he's doing. So as we approach this day, my hope is that we will have the words of Jeremiah 29, 11 on our minds. That's where God says, I know the plans that I have for you. Plans for good and not for evil. And whatever we're facing today, let's, let's um, know that whatever it is, God is working out good for us. And particularly a good that will last for all eternity. So I know that some of you have some nails that are piercing your soul today, just as the nails pierced the hands and the feet of Jesus. And I'm praying that each of you will find that God's faithfulness will give you strength and courage. I'm praying for you that you will be able to say, Father, into your hands, I commit my spirit. Father, not my will, but thy will be done. Let's all bow together. And let's finish our devotion on a word of prayer. O oh Lord, our God, our Father in heaven, you are powerful and wise. You are perfect in every way. And we know, Father, that we can trust you. We are grateful to know, Father, that the plans that you have made for us our plans for good and not for evil. We pray, Lord, that we might always have the strength and the courage to put our trust in those plans that you have made, to trust in you, Lord, and know that what you do is always good and it is always right. Especially in the moments of life that are painful and difficult, we pray, Lord, that we might have that trust we might be able to say, as Jesus said, Lord, and commit our spirit unto you. Lord, we lift up our prayer today for Tim Fuqua. Lord, we're praying for the doctors and nurses who are taking care of him. We pray that the treatment plan that they have prepared will, will help him to recover, recover his health. We pray for Laquita and all their family, Lord, you'll give them strength and courage as they 
rally around him and support him through this time. I'm just so thankful for Tim and Laquita and all of the good work that they do in the kingdom. And Lord, we pray that you will wrap your loving arms around them and bless them as only you can. We continue our prayer for Jerry Reddick today and hopeful that, that he will have a good day today and that you will give him the strength, Lord, that he needs to face whatever this day brings. We continue to pray for Cinda and Jennifer and Andrea and pray, Lord, that you will build up this family and encourage them, sustain them through this time. There are many others, Father, who are dealing with sickness and dealing with tragedy and dealing with all kinds of difficulties in this life. And we just pray, Lord, for your blessings of hope and peace. Lord, we continue to pray for your watchful care over us during this pandemic. Just pray, Father, that we are soon going to see the end of this. And pray, Father, that you will sustain us through the days to come. Lord, please forgive us of our sin. And help us today to make those choices that will honor you in the way that you deserve to be honored. Give us this day our daily bread. And help us, Father, to, uh, to be that light shining that others will see and be drawn closer to you. Lord, we pray for the congregation here at Greenfield and for other congregations of thy people. Lord, please bless the church to continue to um, share the, the truth uh, uh, and the love of Christ into our communities, especially at this time, but at all times, Lord. Lord, we pray that you will strengthen us in the areas where we are tested and tempted and help us, Father, to be faithful to you. Lord, I pray for each one listening today. And I know that you know each person's struggle and I know that you know uh, each challenge they're facing. And whatever is in front of them today, I pray for your blessing, Lord. Please go with us and keep us always in your loving care. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right. Good morning, Kay. Good to, I, I told Nate the other day I, I was going to have to write him a note so he could skip school and get, get be on here with me <laughs> again sometimes. I sure do miss him uh, being on here with me. It's great to see everybody today. I do hope that you all have a good day and praying for God's blessing and whatever you're facing today. And uh, as you know, uh, my hope always is for God to bless each of you and for you to know how much uh, you are loved. Hope you have a good day.